Hello and welcome to another video. This is uh, video number two for Twitter, how you can use the API to connect, uh, authenticate, request permissions, and finally submit uh, tweets from your application. And it doesn't matter what it is. As long as you have a token, you can post uh, messages, read tweets from the user. Uh, we're going to start slowly. Uh, this video is going to be short because I'm going to show you the layout, the setup that you need to do in your side, on your side. And if you don't want uh, too much trouble, you can also download it from GitHub. But I'm going to walk you through it so you know what's going on, what it is, because usually I find GitHub projects and it's difficult to understand them uh, because we don't know how they set it up you know what needs to change if something does not work anymore and things like that so the first thing I did like I said on my previous video create a project and add a class library that's what I did I started off with a class library and I renamed my basic class to Twitter you can name this anything you want it doesn't have to be named Twitter uh, the project is Twitter API but the class is Twitter in this is my in my case the next step you need to do is add a reference to REST Sharp. You're going to need this guy to help you out make API calls or REST calls to, the, to, to Twitter. So the easiest way to do is just to add a package and just search for REST Sharp. As you can see, I already did. So install this. That's all you need. There's nothing else you need. Rest sharp. You don't need any other third party wrappers uh, for the API. It's better if you do it yourself, then you know you can keep up with changes that Twitter does and like that instead of using somebody else that probably will not update their code in years. So, rest sharp, that's all you need. And I think that's it and you need for this, for that class. That's all you need. So, that's all what I have there so far. Uh, the next thing to do is, well, we're gonna. The next thing that I did was I added another project. So I went right click and added uh, another new project. In this case, I use an MVC 4.5.net. So that's why I have an MVC project. Nothing special. It's just a plain old MVC. Okay. And the next thing what I did is I went to my class. And this is what I'm gonna talk about in this video about request token of just on that on that function here this method so my first what I need to do is on your side guys is you need to add this uh, using rest sharp make sure you have that one authenticators this is a big one in this project you need to use that one to make it simple and not all complicated and this is just a utility uh, there's a couple ways you can do this without even using this namespace, namespace but since we have it here uh, using this reference will be very easy to go about so make sure you have this top three lines the rest as you can see we probably can delete it I'll just leave it there for now and the next thing we need to look at is how you're gonna request a token before you can even ask the, the person or the user for permission, you need to talk to Twitter API and say, I need a request token. So that's what this is gonna do. And as you can see, um, so the way to do it here, and obviously there's a lot of things you can change on this code, this is just a, give you an example how you can set it up and there's a lot of people will say that's the wrong way of doing it and that is correct that's fine but trying to keep this video short short uh, this is not a, a basic C sharp or object oriented uh, video so this is how to connect to API so make sure you have a REST client passing the basic uh, API endpoint and the next thing you're going to do is use the authenticator, OAuth1 authenticator, uh, and using the request token. And it requires the key 
the secret and the callback so where do you get this values from well the key as you can see here so the key that I got uh, where do I get the value you need to go to Twitter developer application management and each application will have its own key and its own secret key so make sure you get it from there and then the callback when you set up the new application make sure you add a callback URL so where do you get it from what I did is that basically this means is that uh, when the customer gives you access or permissions they will go back somewhere and that somewhere this is where the callback URL means so when people say yes I will give X uh, allow permissions to your application they need to go somewhere so this is where we're gonna be using the MVC so for that I have created a controller you don't have to but this is one way of doing it you can use any of the controllers like home you could use that but in my case I just kept it separately so I have Twitter that's my controller and inside this controller I have as you can see I'm gonna do that as you can see I have um, I'm gonna remove this uh, we don't need that uh, I have a key and a secret and basically as you can see I'm pulling this from the configuration from the web.config and I have a key and a secret okay uh, that's where I'm getting the values that's where I'm saving my key and the secret for this specific application so when the a user accepts then Twitter is gonna send that person or that user back somewhere that's where the callback uh, is used for when they give you permission they will go back here and in my case Twitter is gonna send them back to my uh, Twitter controller and the action is gonna be AUTH basically where it's gonna be authentic authenticated because from here we need to take another step still it's not it's not done so well that's gonna be on the next video but on this one I'm just letting you know the process of what's going on here so you, you can understand in case something breaks then you know what's happening so so far we'll cover all this code line 17 all the way to 23 the next step is that we're gonna use um, REST client now and create a request and our request and resources is going to be at, at this location this is where Twitter uh, is asking us to go to and it's going to be a post okay and then with all our values here we're going to submit we're going to execute obviously I don't have any error checking here I'm just guessing it's going to work but you get the idea you can add your error exception and all that stuff later so once we submit it we're gonna get back in our response we should be checking here if our response is okay or not but I'm assuming here we're gonna be okay and then once you get it back you need to grab the content basically uh, we're gonna use this utility as you can see it's a rest sharp extension mono HTTP utility uh, there's a couple MVC has its own but this is available here on the class so end up using that and it's pretty simple and it works the same so as you can see here I'm using the this variable and then basically we're using the name value uh, key to get the value and so we're looking for the auth token underscore token and the same thing for the token underscore secret it's pretty basic now once you have those two values you're gonna tell a REST request that you wanna create another uh, request basically but diff the resources now is different on the top it was a request now we're asking for to authorize that token okay so step one request a token then say well now I wanna authorize that token with the user and here's the token as you can see here and now the nice feature about REST, REST Sharp is that you can build the URL from that request and push it out to a string. So that's what's happening here. We're going to build it, that request, and submit it back to our client. In that case, it's our MVC client. 
so that's what it's doing here returning a string we are returning an URL so that's where we need to go now so who's calling this guy well we go back home and as you can see I'm gonna take that away right now in here I also have the key and the secret so it's in a couple places I have it here and in here so I think it's a better way to have a, a static class in one place without you know to duplicate this code anyways you can fix that on your own and the idea is that you need to have access basically to the key in the secret uh, key so in my home controller when if I run if I start debugging right now running when the user hits the index then this class is gonna take over right this is code is gonna run so here I'm using the Twitter API that's the class we could fix that I'll just leave it like that for now and here we are expecting a, a URL back so as you can see here I'm saying get request token passing the key uh, the secret and the callback URL so as you can see Twitter that's my controller and the next one is my action okay controller and then the action make sure you spell it right uh, as you can see this weird URL that is the one that I talked about in my first video you need to make sure you understand how this guy works because uh, this guy is making a tunnel between your local host and the public internet so if you do local host here uh, it's not gonna work you know Twitter cannot call back a local host and then what we're doing here once we have the URL we're redirecting that user to that uh, page so going back to this ngrok.io as you can see here on my screen that's what I'm using uh, I have a free plan and the free plan means that basically this HTTP and the S this will be a random number every time you restart this uh, this service basically but as you can see it's redirecting uh, calls to the local host that's how you need to work so every time you turn this guy on this thing is going to change unless you get the pay version so the next thing to remember and remember every time that every time you restart this guy you need to go back to Twitter to your application management and update this guy because right now if I run it's gonna fail because as you can see I have 735 and then this one is 8b2 that's not they don't match and the one on Twitter application is using the, the is using this one from the last time I was trying this out so now I need to go back to uh, Twitter management application and update it with this URL so I'll move this aside I need to update this guy to whatever you get on your side like that and I need to go back to, to Twitter developer and do the same thing so I'm gonna pause the video to go and do that so as you can see here this is where you need to change it every time you reboot the other guy A B 2 A C 84 B okay so that's what you need to do if you're not getting the callback or callback does not match that that's what's happening so make sure you do that update that guy to make sure it works okay so so far that's good uh, I'm gonna run it and see what happens and we'll stop at that point so we'll start debugging it's gonna go to the index with our information and hopefully Twitter has updated our callback URL so it can match but you will see what happens right now okay great so so far it looks good uh, it's asking us to authorize 
okay and we can authorize and then as you can see these are the permissions that we're asking uh, I know that the read and write permissions on your application at Twitter settings if you only have read and write uh, you won't be able to post tweets or update profiles especially the post tweets you only are able to read tweets I believe and a couple other things so I had to go back and change it to read write and direct messages and that one gave me the, the it basically gave me the post tweets for you because that's the one that I'm looking for how you can post tweets for the user oh, and read it obviously so anyways that's th that's it for this video uh, on the next video we're gonna continue on authorize app so hopefully this section has helped you out how you can first connect uh, as for a token and then we're on the last step almost there we're gonna go back to this one on the next video thank you for watching